Well, everybody, thank you for, for thank you for joining us this evening. This is the uh, spring celebration, so happy spring, everybody! And we we will be uh, exploring a couple different themes tonight. So one is the how do we get spring into our drinks? So as you can see on the table here, we've got some mint, and we've got some fresh thyme, and we actually we have this is an actual a rose and we have rose, uh, dried rose petals. And all of these things are actually going to be directly in our drinks at some point this evening. So that's how you get spring into your drinks. And so it's, it's actually more specifically about how to infuse things into your drinks. And so there are a whole bunch of different methods and we're gonna learn about all of them. Some of them take longer than others, but we'll, we'll learn about all the different ways that you can, that you can do that and, and bring some of these flavors into your drinks. So um, we've got drinks for the Kentucky Derby. So we've got two drinks. One is the mint julep, which is a, a classic time honor classic. And we've got one that's maybe not so popular because I, I made it up. It's called the Dark Horse. And so those will be our Kentucky Derby theme drinks. We've got some for Cinco de Mayo. So we have the Paloma, which is that that's a very popular um, drink in Mexico and um, an alternative to the, the proverbial margarita. So instead of making a regular margarita, which we've made in the past in different forms, we're gonna make a breakfast margarita, which will be interesting. And that will kind of, that kind of breakfast and like the sweeter, lighter theme is gonna lead us into our Mother's Day celebration. So we have two drinks for Mother's Day. We've got an outer flower grapefruit mimosa, and a blackberry rose mule. And that's where you're gonna see, especially on that blackberry rose mule, you're gonna see some of the uh, more advanced techniques for how to get flavors into your, into your drinks. And uh, to, to round it out, we have some drinks just in celebration of spring itself. And some drinks that we have here go way back to about a hundred years ago. So pre-prohibition and some of them remain popular into prohibition. But they've got some some spring theme to them. One is called aviation, and the other is the bees knees. So that will be our program for this evening. And um, before we start, as always, we'll do I, our um, our topic of alcohol safety. Safety. So I'm very self-aware that there's nothing that I'm going to tell you that's memorable about uh, a topic that's as serious as that. So I'm going to list the help of people who are way who carry way more weight in this regard. So one of them is actually my daughter, Catherine. So when she was about three and a half, four preschool, she drew this picture and it is quite obviously a bluebird. So for me, it represents happiness because this is, how, how can you not, not be adorable? But, okay, you may ask yourself, what on earth does this have to do other than the fact that a bluebird or what looks like a bluebird to me has to do with spring. So I'm going to let the other expert drive the point home, and that is Sergeant McCarthy. And so we'll see what he has to say about it. May I have your attention, please? This is Tim McCarthy for the Indiana State Police. Football fans, after the game, your number one priority is getting home safe and sound. Please drive carefully, stay alert. And keep in mind the bad consequences caused by drinking then driving. Remember, you'll never find that blue bird of happiness with too many swallows. Boom. So, uh, that is how the blue bird, that's how you make sure that you have the blue bird of happiness. Listen to Sergeant McCarthy and be aware of your, be aware of what you're serving people and what you are consuming yourself. All right, so uh, we'll get to, to the methods that we have to infuse our drinks with some of these, some of these flavors and others. And so uh, I'm gonna do this in order of the most amount of time so that it takes the longest to the most instantaneous that you can, that you can get. So depending on what you have time for and what, what you wanna do, uh, these are the ways that you can do it. So the, um, the, the most, the longest, time is infusion. So if any of you had watched the, the gin episode, we actually infused, we made our own gin by infusing it, uh, vodka with 
juniper berries and a couple other different flavors. So it's almost like a tea bag concept, but it's cold. And so you, you just infuse it in the vessel or whatever, either the water or the alcohol that you're going to use, and you leave it for 24 to 48 hours. So that, that requires some lead time. Or uh, the other thing that you re may remember that we did is we did a infusion of triple sec with with some chili peppers, and that turned out pretty well when we made hot, hot margaritas. So again, about 24 hours, you break these chili peppers up, put it in a triple sec, and that's what, that's what you get, infusion. So the, uh, a quicker way to get flavors infused into your, your drinks is to do a reduction. So this is you know, a baking technique that you, uh, I'm sure, have heard of for you, you make glazes and so forth. So one of the drinks tonight, and it's the, the uh, rose mule, blackberry rose mule, requires uh, uh, rose syrup. So there's two ways to get rose syrup. You can just buy it on Amazon uh, and, and they, they do have it out there. I think they have like eight ounce bottles or bigger bottles. You probably would need much more than that unless you're making a lot of drinks. The other way is you can actually make it. And that's what we uh, did this um, with, with our batch of, of rose syrup and there's the end product there's what it there's what it looks like when you're done it's a red concoction and it's got a lot of sugar in it it's very sweet and you can see it's almost like syrupy because it's it's uh it's done by boiling your boiling water so um and i'll i'll show you at least now how that works so you you get the, you get rose, rose buds, and, and this is what they look like. And you put them in water with, uh, with sugar. So it, depending on what, the, what volume you want, you're gonna use a two to one volume of your water to your rose petals and an equal amount of sugar as your water volume. So if you wanna do one cup of water, one cup of sugar, and uh, a half a cup of rose petals, that's going to reduce down and you're going to get about a quarter to a third of the volume. So you're going to get maybe this much. If you, which is maybe a quarter of a cup, third of a cup. If you do one cup of water, one cup of sugar and, and a half a cup. Now you can scale that up obviously and make a lot more at a time. And if you're going to go through the trouble to do that, I would recommend that. So, and I did it, I made a, a larger batch and you can just pour it into a um, into a mason jar. So that's the that's probably the second way. And you can do this in about a half an hour to an hour, you know. And, uh, but you got you got to allow time for it to cool down. You don't want to pour it steaming hot. I mean, you'll pour it onto ice, but uh, you're you're going to want to allow some time for that to cool down because it's a very thick, uh, hot syrup. Whenever you're uh, whenever it comes directly out of your uh, saucepan. Um, so uh, that's the second method. Um, the third method is even quicker still. It's, it's uh, muddling. And we've done this before with, with various drinks. We're going to do it a couple times tonight, right off the bat with the mint julep. So muddling is where you take a blunt instrument and you, whatever you have, you kind of, you, you put down a bed of ice usually. And the ice, the purpose of that, it, it kind of provides some sharp surface for you to grind uh, the muddler against. And then, there's either a piece of citrus fruit or uh, in this case, mint leaves or whatever else uh, you might use to flavor your drink. And when you grind it up, it is going to flavor your drink. Uh, and it'll do it relatively quickly because you can do that right on the spot. You have some liquid in there. When you shake it up, it's gonna be infused uh, right on the spot. And when you pour your drink off, you'll retain that flavor. So uh, that's the, the third quickest method. The, uh, the fourth method, uh, and this is just for a citrusy uh, essence. So you just, I mean, very straightforward. You just simply squeeze a piece of fruit, whether that be lime, lemon, or orange into your glass. Or the other thing is when you're making a twist, like an orange twist or a lemon twist, in that peel is a lot of citrus oil. And that's, you get, that's where you get a lot of the scent from. So you can actually twist that onto the rim of your glass and you're going to get both the scent and the flavor of that citrus oil on your glass. So that is the, and that's, you know, that doesn't take very long, less than a minute. Um, so the, the fourth 
So the fifth method is to simply buy uh, your flavors pre-made. So there are, uh, they're called bitters. So it's not just the old fashioned Angostura bitters. It's been around for 150 years. It's, they have all different kinds of flavors of bitters now. They have fruit flavors, they have herb flavors, they have just about any flavor of bitters that you can imagine now. Um, or they have syrups. So like I said, you can buy this stuff pre-made, um, rose syrup or any other type flavored syrup that you want to put into your um, into your drinks. So um, that, I mean, there's a lead time, of course, of ordering it and waiting for it to come. But it, once you have it, uh, it's instantaneous. You pour it right into your drink and you, you get a flavored drink. Um, the sixth is to simply buy alcohol that has flavor in it. And so we're going to see that twice tonight, a couple times tonight, actually. Uh, and these are just the floral. We have, a, we have an orange uh, infused uh, alcohol. We have a cherry infused alcohol already used, but these two are the most spring-like. So this is Prim de Violette. And this is, uh, this has the uh, essence of violets in directly in the alcohol. And so when you when you pour it in and it's actually very powerful, so you have to be careful with it or you will overpower everything. Um, the other one is elderflower liqueur. And there's a, this is really the only, they're, they're, this is not very common. And this is the only brand that I'm aware of. And it's probably the only brand you can get around here in the PA area and probably uh, in the United States, there's not very many of these. This, there are several brands of elderflower liqueur. This is Saint Germain. Uh, this is this is the one that I like. And uh, but there's there's any number of, of other uh, elderflower liqueurs you can use. So again, this you're getting floral essence right directly into your drink, and it's already mixed into the alcohol. And so you just have to get the right proportions, and then you're going to get your drink infused with the right amount of essence. Okay, and the last alcohol is to, you don't even squeeze it in. You just simply garnish your drink with these with these ingredients. So we're gonna do that a couple of times. We're gonna gar do some garnish with thyme. So we're not even going to put the thyme into, we're not even, we're not gonna model it. We're simply going to rest it on our glass and because it's a very strong scented plant, you're gonna get that whenever you, uh, whenever your guests, uh, takes their, uh, their first sip, they're gonna get that breath of uh, fresh thyme along with the flavor of their drink. And so that I would also consider a way of maybe indirectly infusing your drinks with the flavor of spring. So uh, there's probably some others that I missed, but those are the main ones that, that I'm aware of and the relative time that it's gonna take you to, uh, to do that. So um, spend a little bit of time up front with that because we're going to, we're going to see these techniques on almost every single drink that we make this evening. So um, the first one is the um, is the mint julep and this is a fun one to make. So I'm going to clear all of this off for a minute because we're going to have a little bit of with making crushed ice. So the the traditional mint julep made in a julep cup and it looks like this. It's a V-shaped cup and I suppose at one time they were silver. This one's stainless steel. Most of the ones that you can buy are stainless steel. And it does a nice job of uh, making the drink very cold because it gets cold quickly when you put the ice in it. But a mint julep is traditionally made with crushed ice. Now, obviously you can very easily make ice uh, in a blender. You just crush it up in a blender and you have you have crushed ice uh, to whatever consistency, however small you want it. But the traditional method is actually to pulverize it. And they, they would pulverize it in a canvas bag. That was the, the, the traditional method that, that they do this in the Kentucky Derby. And they serve about 120,000 of these on, um, on Kentucky Derby weekend. And if you do the math out, it, that ends up being like 1,500 gallons of, of, um, of bourbon. That they use uh, to serve to serve the guests. So uh, the traditional method, you'll get ice, and it doesn't have to be a canvas bag. You could just use a towel if you want to try this this technique. You could take a towel, and the idea behind that, if you put it in a Ziploc bag and crush it up, 
what ends up happening is you'll pun puncture little holes in the bag and water will leak out and it, it won't allow, you'll get water in with your ice. So the idea behind this is the canvas or the, the terry cloth or the towel will absorb that water when you pulverize it. And so you'll, you'll get ice cubes that are already like leaking water into your drink from the very uh, moment you put them in. So um, you get, we have a mallet and you don't have to, it's, it's a wooden mallet. Uh, that's traditionally what they use, but you could use a, a meat tenderizer, you could use anything really. And so we're just going to scoop the ice into the bag. And this one has a little thing where you can tie it so it doesn't fly out whenever you're whenever you're smacking with your hammer. And you start to remove some things here. The plants are sort of jumping. I may have to put them as well. I'm actually going to maybe come over here. Depending um, on how fine you want your ice to be crushed. I mean, if you want it crushed like a snow cone, cone of ice type thing. Feel in there the chunks of ice. You don't want real big chunks. You don't want ice dust. And this is actually the opposite of some of the other ice we're going to use this evening. We have some ice that are in bigger cube cubes and spheres, uh, like those big giant ice cubes that you see some bartenders use. The, the idea behind them is to melt slowly, cool your drink over the course of like an hour. This is completely the opposite. What we're doing here is we're like, we're going to cool this drink down very quickly. And we don't really, I mean, it will water your drink down quicker, but we have a fix for that. And that is just to use a bourbon that is a little bit higher proof than your typical bourbon. So instead of, instead of 80 proof bourbon that's 40% alcohol, we're going to use something that's a little higher. Now, the one that I wanted to get for, for this presentation. You just, it's very hard to get. So it didn't used to be this difficult. It was, it's a bourbon called Blanton's and it's it's just interesting because the top of, this is a, an old stopper from a bottle of Blanton's that I kept. They have uh, horses in different, in positions. So they have eight different poses that correspond to the, the uh, horse's gait. And uh, looks like a disco ball. Like it looks like a little disco ball almost. It's the round, uh, round object, and they, they're topped with these horses, but they're hard to come by nowadays. So uh, you can't even, they get it in like the first of the month at, at PA liquor stores and they sell out immediately. For whatever reason, this, this particular bourbon has become very popular lately and it doesn't even have to do, because I asked the guy uh, whether it had to do with the Kentucky Derby. He said, no, it's like every month, it just sells out immediately. There's people like waiting outside to get it. So, what I settled on, and actually I put a little bit too much ice in there, is Jim Bean Devil's Cut, and this is a this is a, a reasonably priced. Um, it's it's just a Jim Bean product. It's about twenty dollars, and it's uh, it's higher proof. So this is ninety proof. So it's about forty five percent alcohol. So it's just a little bit stronger than your typical than your typical bourbon. So you're going to start. Um, Start the process by putting about a quarter of the of the way down with ice. So just put about a quarter in, and again, all that really is is doing is it's giving you a bed of ice to place your mint and the the um, the things that you're going to muddle, so that it gives you something to grind against when you muddle it. So you're going to put about eight mint leaves. So you can pick them right off of your off of your mint plant if you have one, or you can get the leaves. Like from the herb aisle. So I got eight leaves here. I'm going to rinse them real quick. And I'm going to put them in the bottom of our, on, on top of the bed of ice that we have in there. And the other thing that you need for this is about a half an ounce of simple syrup. And 
Again, simple syrup is extremely easy to make. It's, it's just a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to uh, water. And you heat the water a little bit on the stove top. It only takes a few minutes. And then you have simple syrup. Or you can just buy it. This is available at the liquor store as well, um, just as a, as a product they sell. So about a half an ounce will go in there. All right, and then we're gonna muddle it. So you're gonna take your muddler and you're gonna just crush those leaves as best you can. And it's gonna mingle with the sugar and the ice. Then we're gonna actually add the bourbon. So the next step is we're going to take Two ounces of really any bourbon will do. Kentucky bourbon is nice for the Kentucky Derby. So eight counts is two ounces. And at that point, you are uh, going to have, uh, you're going to add some more ice. So that's why when you make your ice, make a bunch of it because you're going to Fill this all the way up. You're going to pack it as tightly as you can. And then when you're done packing it, you're actually going to mound it up on top of the drink. But before we do that, we're going to put the straw in there and we're going to stir it slowly. So it kind of swirls around. And if you do it right, you're going to get a nice frost on the outside of the glass. So the object is to get that to get that jewel of glass to frost over. I mean, the colder you can get get it, the better. And then you're going to pack some more ice in it. So you're just going to keep, even if it goes down a little bit, you're going to keep you're going to keep packing it in. And then what I like to do is take this. Almost like a snow cone consistency, and then you can get like a like an ice cream scooper and scoop the rest on top, and almost make like a mound on top of that. And then you get to have fun with the garnish. So your drink is is essentially ready, but you're still going to garnish it. So the way you garnish a uh, a mint julep is, and this is. This is one that I like. I've seen it in places you don't you don't see it a lot, but if you take some powdered sugar and you and you sift it onto the top of that, it is going to do two things for you. It's going to make your top of that mint julep snow white, like a pristine. So I'm going to do this over the sink. Let me start making sure on my table. So it gives you a nice pristine snow cap of ice and powdered sugar. And it will, as the drink melts eventually, or if you go for a second helping with bourbon, you already have your sweetener mixed in because that, that powdered sugar will find its way into your drink and make it even sweeter at some point in time. And then the next thing you're going to do to garnish it, of course, is to add a mint spray. And what you'll see a lot of bartenders do is they'll take this and they'll smack it over the back of their wrist or they'll stick it and they'll kind of smack it with their hands a couple times. And that releases the oils in there and it wakes, it wakes the mint up and so you can garnish with that. And since I've got my little Blanton's figure here, I might just push this into the top of my drink and we'll have a little course in addition to our, to our mint spray to garnish our drink with. So that is a mint julep. So we'll put this here and we will move our
We move our dime out of the way for now. And remove our mint for now. We'll use this later. And I'm going to brush some of this ice off so it doesn't go. So our second drink is called the Dark Horse, and this one is relatively straightforward, and we've seen something similar uh, before. Uh, there was a, a drink that we did called a Gold Rush, and it was a very, it, these are all variations on the traditional uh, whiskey sour. So in a traditional whiskey sour, you've got lemon juice and, sh and sugar in the form of simple syrup that you, you use to uh, sweeten and add citrus to your bourbon or your whatever whiskey that you're using. In this case, we use bourbon again. So the alternative to that is you can use other, other sweeteners. So if you use honey, which is what we did in the Gold Rush, and we used Irish whiskey, so it, was, it ended up being a very blonde uh, concoction, very light. So honey and Irish whiskey, uh, bourbons, they tend to be darker. And it's, in most cases, it is actually, they actually put caramel color into it. So unless you age whiskey for a very long time, like 12 or 18 years, some, something like you would see with a scotch, it doesn't really get this dark normally. So there's some caramel color in there. So that's going to be, it's going to be darker if we use a, a darker bourbon like that. And we're going to use either uh, dark uh, syrup, dark corn syrup, or molasses, which is what I'm going to use because uh, I like the taste of molasses. You could also use maple syrup if that's what you like. I think at one point when we did the whiskey episode, someone in our group used uh, maple syrup and they like that for a uh, for a different twist on a on a uh, whiskey sour. So in this case, we're going to use molasses. But what you have to do is you got to cut it again one to one with water, just like you would with sugar. So you pour half molasses or uh, or corn syrup, caro corn syrup, dark caro corn syrup, half water, and almost that is almost you almost don't even need to heat it. But you could heat it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Shake up your your glass, and this will stay like this even when you refrigerate it. It's not going to settle out. It's it's even easier to make than simple than simple sugar. So that's the uh, other ingredient that we're going to use in the in the dark horse. So uh, we're going to start with our shaker this time, and we're going to fill it with ice. So I'm going to get some ice out here. And so we're going to use, again, two ounces of, of bourbon. And we're going to use about a half an ounce of lemon juice. So we're going to just fresh squeeze this. And because it's hard to free pour lemon juice, I'm going to measure it. And just to squeeze this out and get a half an ounce. Okay. Or if you like it, even if you like it on the tart side, you can go three quarters of an ounce. And so you're going to use three quarters of an ounce of, or whatever version of simple syrup you're using, whether it be simple syrup itself or caro syrup, dark caro syrup, or molasses. And there's three quarters. So again, if you like it on the tart side, you can balance it out and do three quarters and three quarters. If you like it sweeter, do it this way and only put a half an ounce of the lemon juice. And then you're going to mix this up. And when we're going to use a we're going to use a large cube. Remember, I mentioned the different geometries that you can use. These are the like the oversized ice cubes. They have special uh, 
little molds that you can use to make spheres or cubes. So we're going to put a large cube in here. And the logic behind that again is slows down the melt rate of your drink. So you can sip this drink for a good half hour before even anything noticeable in terms of dilution in your drink. So pour this in. And you can see this is pretty dark. So we've achieved the color effect that we're looking for here on the dark horse. And what you'll see a lot of bartenders do, especially with these large cubes, is they'll put a little squiggle of some sort of syrup. Uh, so in this case, I'm using the corn syrup. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on there and that's gonna float on our ice cube. It'll probably even stick to that ice cube. Eventually it'll, it'll plunge into your drink and make it sweeter. But this, uh, is the finish of our dark horse. And my lens garnish is not cooperating. Lens doesn't like it. We're putting in the ginger product. All right. So the the um, third one that we're going to do this evening is we're starting to get into our Cinco de Mayo celebration. So this is the Paloma. So instead of doing more margaritas, we're going to get into a different type of, of drink. So the Paloma, we're going to do some, we're going to have to see some similar elements to the margarita. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to garnish the glass with salt, just so that we've got some something similar. So we're going to rim the glass, but with, with some salt, margarita salt. But we're going to use a tall glass for this one. So this is a, it's a little bit drink. It has a little more volume in it than a margarita. So a little more juice. So we're gonna use a taller glass because we're gonna need a little more space. So we're gonna start with that. Um, and then we're gonna squeeze half an ounce of, and again, we're gonna measure this. It's hard to squeeze like you would have pre pour so we're going to use a half an ounce of lemon juice or lime juice. I'm sorry. And I'm probably going to need a little bit more. Half an ounce of lime juice. And then the real star of this drink is uh, grapefruit juice. So you can, you can use fresh squeezed uh, grapefruit juice. I would recommend pink grapefruit juice. It gives it a very nice color. The alternative way to do this is instead of using fresh citrus, you can use grapefruit soda. So you could use grapefruit seltzer water. You're still gonna need something sweet. So uh, you probably need some grape juice, fruit, fruit, grapefruit juice cocktail, or uh, there is a soda, I'm sure a lot of you remember it, Squirt. Squirt was a grapefruit flavored soda. And so that is also an alternative to, you could just use, because um, you'll use a little bit of soda in this drink. But the grapefruit, again, is the star. It's going to give it a little bit of a pink hue if you use pink grapefruit like this. But you're going to use a good amount of grapefruit juice. You may have to squeeze both halves, because you're going to want about three ounces of grapefruit juice in total. So we started with a half an ounce of lime juice, and so then we're going to get all the way to three and a half on this measuring glass. So yeah, I'm going to need the other half of this grapefruit to get there unless I start using my muddling tool to really squeeze some juice out. Okay, so we've got three and a half ounces of juice total here, half an ounce of wine. And um, so you're going to start in your shaker again, so we'll rinse it out. Start with some ice. We'll put our juice in there. And then you're going to need two ounces of tequila. So that's eight counts. So here's our tequila. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we're going to shake that up, get the flavors to melt. And 
after we have rimmed our glass, we're going to put some ice in it. We're going to use some of the bigger cubes that we have. So we'll use a mixture of the spheres, the cubes, and this will melt nice and slow then. So we'll get our mixture, pour that in. Here, cracking, it's nice, fresh. Then we're going to garnish it with some fresh fruit. So we're going to use chalons and grapefruit because this is what we started with. This is the fruit that we actually garnished it with. So, or that we that we used in the drink. So we use that. And we'll plant a straw in it. And we have our Paloma. So mint julep, and by the way, this mint julep is now very, you can see that it's not just condensed water, it's actually like a layer of ice that you can chisel away. So it's working, working well. Our julep glass is doing its job. Mama, dark horse, and let's see. The next one that we have is a breakfast margarita. So again, instead of doing a uh, instead of doing a regular margarita, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So because it's breakfast, we're going to use a juice glass instead of a margarita glass. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're still going to going to salt the rim just like we did with the Paloma. So we get that margarita effect, but this time we're gonna we're gonna salt the rim with pink salt. So this is pink Himalayan salt, and so I'm gonna take the white salt and kind of brush that off. And we're gonna use pink salt instead. Juice glass. All right, so we got a nice pink rim on there, and we are going to have in our shaker. So we will rinse out our shaker again. And we'll get some ice in it. And in there, we're going to put two ounces of tequila to start out with. So eight counts. Okay. And this is where the sim similarity uh, with the with a normal margarita starts to depart. So in a normal margarita, you would use like triple sec. Um, we're going to use Grand Marnier, which is still an orange flavor of liqueur, but this is a much higher proof. So this is 40% alcohol. So this is almost the same. This is basically the same proof as a tequila. So it's much stronger than triple sec. Triple sec is maybe 15% alcohol. So there's there's your difference. So this breakfast drink does actually have quite a punch. This is probably two and a half to three servings, standard servings of alcohol that we're that we're putting in this drink. So one, two, uh, three quarters of an ounce. So three. All right. And then you have a choice. You can use fresh squeezed lime juice or you can use roses lime juice. So roses lime juice is sweetened lime juice. That's what you would typically see in a margarita served in a restaurant. And you'd see something like this. So um, this is this is an option. Or you could use lime, squeeze lime juice. So you're gonna you could have um, you, you could squeeze about a is it uh, it is 
three quarters of an ounce of fresh wine. So that's it. Three quarters of an ounce of wine and a little bit of simple syrup. And what you'll see a lot of times when you have a margarita themed drink. is you'll see people use agave nectar. I don't have agave nectar, but I'll use the simple syrup. So you have the simple syrup here a second ago. All right. And the secret ingredient to this drink, and because it's a breakfast margarita, is a tablespoon of orange marmalade. So that's going to complement the that's going to complement the the uh, Cointreau or the uh, Grand Marnier that we have, which is the that's it's an orange flavored liqueur, strong or orange flavored liqueur. We use some orange marmalade. We use about a tablespoon of that, and that's going to give us. Pretty good. And when you do this, when you mix this up, you can strain it. You can use a strainer because in the orange marmalade, you're going to get little flecks of orange. I personally like to have that in the, the actual drink. So let me get my topper. I'll shake that up. We'll have a tequila, a lime, or simple syrup, or roses, lime syrup, roses, uh, sweet lime juice. If you use that, you'll have your Quattro or your Grand Marnier, and you'll have your orange marmalade. And we're going to use. Spherical ice cube, so it kind of gives the appearance that you got an orange in your glass, so almost like a glass of orange juice. And then John, say how much simple syrup you used. You never said. Oh, it is a it's about a half an ounce of simple syrup. So depending on how sweet you like it, you could either go, you could same thing with the same thing with the Paloma, you uh, or the uh, Dark horse. You can, if you like it on the sweeter side, you lean more towards the simple syrup. If you like it on the tart side, you lean more towards your citrus. So in this case, I, I used more lime. I used three quarters lime and half an ounce of the simple syrup. So it's leaning towards the tart side. But if you want it sweeter, you could do 50 50 or even flip that ratio and go three quarters of the simple syrup and half an ounce of the fresh lime juice. Right. Don't show the pink rim. Oh, so yeah, it's a it's a very breakfast tasting concoction and a very breakfast looking concoction. And it's even in a juice glass. So you want to try it? Okay, try this. All right. Okay. So uh, the the next two. Uh, drinks are getting into our Mother's Day drink. So uh, the uh, the next one on the list is the, the Blackberry Rose Mule. So you're going to, uh, in, in a glass, so you're going to start with it, probably just use like a, uh, a highball glass, like a short glass. You're going to start with that and you're actually going to make, instead of in the, um, in the shaker, you're going to make this drink directly in the, in the glass. So you're going to add a little bit of ice and you could do this drink with either crushed ice or the regular ice. Uh, if, they, if you use the crushed ice, again, it's going to get cold fast, but it's also going to melt fast. So we'll use some regular ice here. And you're only going to want to start out maybe to just put a quarter. Again, when you're doing muddling, which we're going to do in this drink, you're going to only want to start out with maybe like a quarter of a, of a glass of ice to muddle, to muddle your ingredients against. So we're going to use, in this, in this drink, we're going to muddle blackberries. Uh, and mint into the drink. So 
we're going to use a couple of the techniques that we that we use in this one. We're going to put about five fresh blackberries in there, and we'll rinse them real quick. Put these directly in the drink, and we're going to get our mint again, and we're going to get five to seven. So we'll do maybe six with the difference. Mint leaves, rinse those, and we'll put those in there. And that is okay. So, in addition to the uh, the ingredients to muddle with, we're going to put some lime juice in there. So we're going to put some uh, again. Uh, we're going to put a uh, one to one ratio uh, of um, simple syrup and and actually, our simple syrup in this case, oh, let me measure it. One more line. There we go, half an ounce of lime. And then we're going to put in our rose simple syrup. So this is what we had made ahead of time. So you saw how we kind of, we boiled the, uh, the sugar and the water and the rose, uh, the dried rose petals. We got a reduction in syrup and we're going to use about a half an ounce of this. So instead of regular simple syrup, we're just going to substitute this as an ingredient. And this is going to give our drink the infusion of those rose petals. And also it's going to sweeten it as well. So this is what's doing the work along with the uh, drink or along with the uh, blackberries and, and um, the mint in this drink. So once we've got all of that in our glass, we are going to muddle it. So you're going to just again press that as best you can, the mint leaves and crush some of the blackberries against the ice cubes and against the side of the glass. You make sure you get break open and get some of that flavor. Right? And then we're gonna we're gonna completely top off with with ice. Actually, I take that back. Don't go the whole way up because you're going to need to leave some room for some uh, for some ginger beer uh, to top off the drink. So the alcohol itself is vodka. And we're not going to use that much. We'll, we'll do two ounces, seven, eight, and then you're going to top it off with ginger beer. So in this case, we've just got Gosling's ginger beer. You can get this in either the grocery store or any liquor store. And that is kind of what makes it the mule is the addition of the ginger beer. So you'll top that off with that. And you'll put in a straw and give it a gentle stir. You want to leave a little bit of separation. It's got very nice color at the bottom and it will kind of rise and choose its way up. But uh, this drink is kind of the pinnacle of what we're talking about tonight because you've got multiple techniques for infusing your drink. You've got the rose simple syrup, which is the, the reduction. You've got the muddling of the mint. Um, and you've even got the squeezing of the uh, citrus of the wine. So you have multiple ways with which we infuse this drink. And it's a very nice drink for Mother's Day. So we are actually going to go the extra mile and we're going to garnish it with a full mint sprig and maybe some blackberries, get these rinsed. So we'll garnish the top with some blackberries, we'll get a mint sprig, and we'll even put a rose in it for our mother. So there is a, a drink that's truly worthy of Mother's Day. Okay, and the next drink uh, for Mother's Day, this one is a little bit simpler. Oh, 
it's just a mimosa. And we're going to use elderflower liqueur. So again, there's our elderflower infused liqueur is going to do the work in this one. And the other technique that we have is we are going to finish it off and garnish with a sprig of fresh thyme. So we're not going to actually put that in our drink, but it's going to be prominent in our, because it's going to be right at the top of our glass. So uh, we will put this in our shaker with ice. And then and we're going to uh, put in one ounce of this, so four counts, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to use two ounces of fresh squeezed grapefruit juice, so we're going to need this half, and we're probably even going to need to cut some more, so we get another one here. All right, so we get two ounces of grapefruit juice. And we're going to shake this up. And we will strain this directly into our champagne flute. And again, it's going to give us a nice pink hue. Very appropriate for Mother's Day. It's a very light, fruity drink. It's even appropriate for a brunch. And we are going to top it off with either some Prosecco or champagne. So we'll open that. And that's another reason why this one's good for a Mother's Day celebration. So we got a little mini bottle here. So we'll top it the rest of the way with some champagne, Prosecco, and then we're going to garnish it with some thyme. It makes a very nice, very nice Mother's Day drink. So our, there's our elderflower grapefruit mimosa. And our last two drinks this evening are basically in celebration of spring itself. And so, as I mentioned before, these are prohibition era drinks or even pre-prohibition era drinks. So uh, gin was very popular during prohibition. Uh, people made it, uh, made homemade gin, but because it was, it was not very good tasting, I didn't have good quality control standards, uh, it, was, it tasted terrible. So uh, Americans uh, had to come up with uh, very inventive ways to make their drinks taste good. And so that's, that's where uh, these two drinks and uh, actually, really, the bee's knees, the aviation, the inspiration for that was the uh, era of powered flight. So it's a it's a drink that uses elderflower liqueur, and this is uh, this will color the drink. We have to be careful because it will also overpower your drink. So the aviation goes into a glass. It's a, it's a pretty distinctive look. It goes into a coupe like that, uh, even though it's not champagne. And uh, you're going to start with a shaker and ice. And as I said, this one is a gin drink, gin-based drink. And it also has lemon juice in it. And so we'll get lemon juice measured out. And we're going to use three quarters of an ounce fresh squeezed lemon juice. We're going to use two full ounces of gin. So eight counts. And this one is going to use maraschino liqueur. So this is different than maraschino cherry juice tastes a lot different. It's a very spicy uh, drink. So don't over don't go overboard on this. You're probably actually going to want to measure this directly. 
So a half an ounce of this maraschino liqueur. And this is kind of a distinctive look. This Luxardo brand is the is the uh, uh, kind of the, uh, the most prominent one that you'll see. There are other brands of uh, of uh, maraschino uh, cherry juice, but Luxardo is kind of the premier brand. And you'll see this a lot on our shelves. It has like that uh, kind of wicker basket uh, weaving around it. John, what is your recommended favorite gin? The, the uh, I would say that, that the, the one that I use a lot is, is Tanger Eggs. It's pretty accessible. Um, but the, if you're if you're using uh, if you're using it for like a mixed drink, I actually use Seagram's a lot because that's even that's that's less expensive um, than Tanger Egg. So uh, Seagram's is a, is a good product. Tanger is good. Uh, but I've even started to try uh, a few of the, uh, there's, there's one that Wiggle actually makes, and it is a, a Jennifer, uh, which is, that is like the original gin that the Dutch came up with in like the 1500s. And um, they have, so there's all these different, there's been like a, almost like a renaissance in gin um, in the past decade or so, where they're branching out into flavored gins into older styles of gin. So London dry gin is like 90% of what you'll see on the shelf. This is a London dry gin, but like these, um, these, these older versions uh, of gin that you see now are what has, what has been popular in the past couple of years. So those are also very good too. So uh, I would recommend trying them. If you want to get away from something from like a, uh, a London dry gin, check out like the Wiggle Jennifer. Um, that they have um, out there. And uh, other than that, the, a lot of the London drives from the bigger companies, so Beefeater, Tangeray, uh, Bombay Sapphire, all of those are going to taste pretty similar. It's just London dry gin. Um, and uh, so that, that, that's, that's uh, kind of the, what, I, what I would say about, about gin. Okay. And so that's uh, the base of it is gin, and we have our lemon juice, which in that yet. So we've got lemon juice in there, uh, and our uh, maraschino cherry juice. Now here's where you have to pay attention with this drink. If you attempt this drink, creme de violette is very powerful. You want to measure it pretty exactly, and only get a quarter of an ounce because what you're it's very overpowering. If you use much more than that, than a quarter of an ounce, you're going to get what tastes like a dish of potpourri. And that is with a gin-based and lemon-based drink. So you, have, you really have to pay attention to how much creme de violette it is that strong. Now, what this ends up with, and one of the other finishing touch on this drink, You'll strain that directly into a coupe with, with no ice. The finishing touch on this drink is a Luxardo cherry. So again, this is the same brand. And these are a little fancier than the maraschino uh, cherries that you get in, um, you know, like on the grocery store shelf. But I guarantee you they are, they're definitely worth it. They're, they're, these are the type that I would put up with a mediocre drink just to get the cherry afterwards uh, because they're tasty. So you're going to skewer one of these just one in this case, right through the center. And you're going to push the cherry all the way into the center and just balance it on the tip, on the end of your glass. So it's gonna kind of just rest on the rim of that glass like that. And that is what the uh, aviation looks like. And the origin for that is this was in 1916, this was invented. And aviation was inspired by exactly that, uh, the, the start of powered flight. And this is where we started to enter the golden age of flight. People started flying. So the inspiration was, it looks like a pale blue sky. Um, so that's, that's the aviation. And it remained popular during prohibition because again, gin tasted terrible. And so anything you could put into your gin to cut that taste was, was popular. So at this point, we're over seven o'clock. Uh, we can take a break and take any questions. Uh, there's one more drink. It's a pretty simpler, simple one. Uh, 
It's called the bee's knees. And all it is is, is basically uh, two ounces of gin and a 50-50 mix of honey and lemon. And that is uh, going to give you the bee's knees. So that one is definitely a prohibition, pre and post prohibitionary drink because when you mix the, uh, the, the bee's knees, or the, when you mix the honey, that would cut the taste of the, of the bad tasting gin along with the lemon. Uh, and then that even spawned the uh, vernacular of the day, the bee's knees, meaning something that was, that was concentrated greatness because bees make honey with the pollen that comes off of their knees uh, from the flowers. And so uh, that was the, the, the term of art. And it meant something along what we would think about like awesome or great, uh, cool, uh, something like that today. So um, if there's, uh, I'll, I'll kind of pause and see if there's any questions. And I also uh, dropped the Word document in the chat. So that includes all of the drinks John has covered with the ingredient list, as well as the instructions. So you can download it directly to your computer and save it if you're interested. Okay, okay well, if there's not anything else, I'll uh, I'll uh, kind of end there. And uh, happy spring, happy Mother's Day, happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, enjoy the Kentucky Derby this weekend. And uh, remember, don't take too many swallows. <laughs>